Hello! Welcome to our next episode of Epic Level Woodworking. Today I'm going to show you how I made a knitting needle case for storing knitting needles in to keep them from rolling around, getting lost, getting bent inside your bag. It's a hard case, two pieces that go together, kind of like a turned box. And uh, like I said, it's just meant to keep your knitting needles safe. So uh, what I'm doing now is just uh, mounting up the blank to the lathe. It's uh, an oak branch. Nothing special. It's just a straight piece of oak. The bark is all still on it. And the entire case is going to be made out of this one piece. And I'm starting out with a roughing gouge just to get the bark off of there and get it down to uh, a circular shape. Um, it started off relatively round, uh, especially for being just a, a branch cut off the tree. Uh, it was actually pretty well in round already, but uh, it does require a little bit of rounding out just to get it down to a uniform cylindrical shape. And here I'm just turning a tenon on, on either end so that once I get it separated, I can lock the individual ends into my chuck so that I can finish shaping it and also drill out the inside uh, so you'll have a place to put the knitting needles. The tool that I'm using is actually uh, one that I made. It's a uh, carbide tipped cutter and uh, the handle, if you can't tell from the video, is actually just a piece of bamboo. Uh, I did this as a proof of concept more than anything else and I was surprised to find that it works out well enough that I have no intentions of replacing it. Now I'm just using a skew chisel to get it down to a, a straight surface without any kind of lumps or bumps. And now I'm just marking it out to see where about I want to make the cut to split it in half. Now I'm using a parting tool, just a standard flared parting tool, to cut the single blank into two, just like that. And now I've got it mounted in the chuck, as you can see, and uh, it's just a little bit off-center mounted in the chuck, so I'm just straightening it out here. And then I'll grab a Forstner bit, mark off how deep on the Forstner bit I'd like to drill out, and here we go, making the cut. Now I've got it drilled out all the way, and uh, as you can see, it's a... Uh, Pretty good size opening. It's an uh, inch and three-eighths Forstner bit is what I used to uh, drill that out. And I drilled it in about five inches or so. Now I'm just going to make the opening for the other side to snap into. Uh, this will have the recess. The other side will have a tenon on it. And the two will just snap together. I'll try to make it as tight a fit as I can so you don't have to worry about it coming apart. And then doing a little bit more shaping on the back end, getting more of that tenon out of the way. And uh, eventually I'll be cutting that tenon off and hand sanding the end of it to uh, finish. And uh, now I'm just kind of rounding it off, trying to make the shape. Uh, I had, just as a rough idea for the shape, a croquet mallet. And uh, you'll see later I put some detailing on it. Uh, to try to make it look like that. I'm not really sure where the idea for the croquet mallet came from. It just popped into my head as I was turning it and I thought it would look kind of nifty. Hey, 
As you can see, I like to clean up between each step. Have the vacuum cleaner handy pretty much everywhere in my shop. A uh, little bit of sanding that I just did there. Now I'm cutting grooves in uh, the lines on each end and then one line in the middle where the joint's going to come together. Uh, like I said, just to try to give it the look of a croquet mallet. I'm not really sure why, I just thought it was a nifty idea. Now I'm using a piece of metal that I have. It's actually a parting tool, but I'm holding it against the wood. I've got the wood, I've got the lathe turned up pretty high, so the wood's spinning pretty fast. And I'm just holding that metal against the wood until friction causes the wood to actually start burning. You can see the smoke coming off of there. And uh, I'm just burning the insides of the grooves that I cut earlier. Now just a little bit more sanding. And here I am cutting the tenons off, and that's it. Alright, thank you so much for watching, and uh, I hope to keep being able to post more videos. Um, if you liked it, I guess uh, subscribe to the channel and see if I add something else anytime soon. Thanks again, and have a good one.